the ratio of y over d naught, which is the pipe, full pipe diameter, which is in this case 4 feet. This ratio in my example happens to be 0 0.75. So if you go back to the nomograph that we had, it turns out to be the same point that I was showing you earlier. So we've already gone through that process, go across for the ratio of 0 0.75 and read the int where it intersects this curve A or A not labeled. And that turns out to be about point, I would say, 281. And so it's a little bit approximate. We can make it more accurate if we want. Uh, but the flow area in that case uh, will be the ratio of uh, basically what we got is 0 0.82 of the full pipe diameter. And the full pipe diameter, uh, full pipe area is pi d naught squared over 4, which in this case is 12.6 feet squared. So if you take about 80% of that, uh, you know where the, uh, what the answer will be. So if you can do that briefly, you can verify it for yourself. Uh, somebody's already done that. Very good. So, yes, it's uh, anybody else? Just multiply 0.82 with the full pipe flow area. and You get the answer. Answer is B, yes. So let's move on to now the next slide. Uh, I just included two small topics in here because I was told you might get some problems involving flow measurement in pipes. Uh, typically, these are the devices we use called Venturi meters, and another one is called the orifice meter. And typically, what you need in order to calculate the discharge using these instruments is a rating curve. I call it a rating curve, but essentially what it is, uh, an equation, a mathematical equation to calculate the flow rate in the Venturi or in the pipe. What the Venturi meter does is essentially constricts the flow and thereby increases the velocity at a point called the throat of the Venturi. By doing so, it converts essentially the potential of pressure energy to uh, kinetic energy. So therefore, there's a pressure drop observed in the process. And that pressure drop is typically measured by a manometer. In this case, that pressure head drop is given by this term in the parentheses here, r prime, uh, ratio of two specific gravities minus 1. The two specific gravities, S0 and S1, or one is the specific gravity of the fluid in the in, inside the manometer, which in this case is labeled as S0, shown right there. Sorry, that one right there. And uh, S1 is the specific gravity of the fluid going in the pipe itself, whatever it is, maybe water. Uh, so obviously, you want to use a fluid that doesn't mix with water, so typically most people like to use mercury which has a specific gravity of 13.6. So therefore, uh, in, I'll just show you an example of how to use this equation, this rating equation. But there's a question of discharge. Uh, most venturi meters are pretty efficient uh, in terms of losses. So their CD value is about 0.95 to 0.99. Obviously, a CD of 1 is 100% efficient. That means there's no losses whatsoever. Uh, watch out for this A2 here. A2 is the area of the throat, what we call the throat of the venturi. And that's based on the, the size of the pipe at that point. Uh, also, there's a ratio of two diameters here, D2 or D1. D2 is the diameter at the throat. And D1 is the pipe diameter at section 1 here. So anyway, uh, the, this is a device that's used for measuring Q. Uh, we have another one called the orifice meter. The fundamental difference between these two is in an orifice meter, you have an opening. And that, again, basically constricts the flow, thereby increasing the velocity. So it does a kind of similar thing that uh, Venturi does. And of course, the CD, of course, is uh, lower than the case of Venturi because there's more head loss associated with a device like this. The equation looks the same, the rating equation. Once again, you can calculate Q where, given the information on the right-hand side. To give you an example, I did one for Venturi meter. Uh, you can kind of set it up for uh, an orifice meter the same way. Uh, here's the flow of water. Specific gravity is 1. It goes through a 24-inch pipe. That's D1. Using a venturi meter with a 6-inch throat, that means the D2 is 6 inches. Now remember, since we're taking the ratio of these two diameters, we don't have to convert to consistent unit of feet. The gauge difference in the manometer is 11.8 inches. Again, it's given in inches, so be careful because the consistent unit, as I pointed out to you earlier, is feet, not inches. Uh, so, so it's 11.8 inches. That's your R prime in the equation. Assume a coefficient of discharge of 0.95. And here we go substituting all these given quantities, like CD is 
and then of course a a2 you have to calculate that the area of the throat which is six inches in pipe size but it has to be in square feet and I've calculated that for you right here by d squared over four notice I'm converting the six inch pipe size into feet to make it consistent and then of course the pressure drop that term that I told you in the equation r prime times s naught over s1 minus 1 is really what I call in hydraulics a pressure drop delta H and that will be if you use consistent units come out in feet so in this case 11.8 inches divided by 12 uh, yes can you are you all not able to hear or something uh, let me see could you please slow down yes uh, I will do that um, somebody said about CD will it be given in the problem yes the CD will be given in the problem if not, uh, as I said, you might have to assume it. For a venturi meter, it's about 0.95. And for an orifice meter, typically around 0.6. Now, here's the equation that uh, I was looking at uh, as an example. In this case, the CD, the coercion of discharge, is given as 0.95. And therefore, I'm going to use that essentially in the equation here. Uh, also note that <coughs> uh, the pressure drop that we calculated is about 12.39 feet of water uh, and therefore we substitute in this equation to calculate Q. So the final product is Q which is CD times that pressure drop and of course uh, multiplied by this quantity called or divide by 1 minus D2 over D1 to the power of 4. So you all can do these calculations. I've just shown it to you in this example. The final flow rate through the pipe is 5.27 CFS. So the primary purpose of venturi meters is to measure the discharge. And uh, I will try to go as, as slow as I can. Uh, if, uh, if I'm going a little fast, please let me know. The next thing we'll talk about is the flow measurement in open channel systems. Just like venturi meters and orifice meters in pipes, we have similar devices in, for open channel flow systems. Uh, it's called a partial flume. And all I'm going to show you is the rating equation here for a partial flume. The idea in this case is similar to the venturi meter. Uh, if you look at the plan view from the top, notice what, what they're doing to the flow. The flow comes into the channel system and is constricted. So when you constrict the flow, the flow velocity increases, just like in a pipe. And when it does that, the flow depth is going to change or drop. And that's what we need to measure is the drop, drop in water surface as opposed to, say, the pressure drop that we saw in a venturi meter. So that head drop or head difference is what we use to capitalize on determining the Q. So on the Q equation is given here. Just be a little careful in using this equation. We have 4W, that's the width of the throat. Uh, <clears throat> and then somebody asked me, where do you place the flume? Uh, anywhere in the channel system where you want to measure the flow. Uh, for example, in the case of wastewater, that's where it's usually used is in water treatment plants. They put these uh, partial flumes where the water comes in or the, for treatment, and at that point where they want to measure the total discharge coming in, and this is essentially where they can place it. Uh, somebody asked me, are these images a plan and profile view? Well, this is a plan view from the top, and this is a profile view okay, of the same thing. Does that explain your, your question? Okay, somebody asked me about a parenthesis. Yes, I will explain that if uh, to elaborate that. For example, this equation is 4 times W times H to the power 1.522. And that whole thing is raised to the power W raised to the power 0.026. I know this is a little messy. So what I suggest is, in using this equation, first calculate W to the power of 0 0.026 and then multiply by 1.522 and then that becomes the new exponent for H. Is that clear? So if you want to put parentheses, that's fine. I don't see the need for it. Uh, there's an example, I think, on the next slide, but I show you how to use it. But make sure the units are consistent. And here's the equation, and I've set up a small example for you. As I said before, in this case, you have a partial flume with a throat width of 5 feet. That's one of the variables. And it has a free-flowing upper head of one and a half feet. And that's all you need in order to calculate the Q here. So 
notice here what I've done, W to the power of 0.026, so I take 5 to the power of 0.026 first, and then whatever I get, I multiply by 1.522, and then raise that new exponent to the power of 1.5, and finally I calculate the Q. It comes out in CFS, the answer, that's a consistent unit. Uh, typically in wastewater systems, we use a unit called MGD, million gallons per day, uh, for those who do not know the conversion factor, I suggest you take one with you. Uh, I can tell you right now what it is. 1 MGD is, is 1.55 CFS. So if you want to make a, make a note of it, that's fine. A uh, million gallons per day is a preferred unit uh, of measurement in water supply and wastewater systems. Uh, systems. <clears throat> well, now the, the crux of our discussion this, uh, this afternoon will be fluid dynamics. Uh, some of the principles that we use in solving problems, both in pipe systems and open channel systems. Uh, somebody is asking me another question here. Can you show us what H represents in the evaluation, elevation of plan view? Uh, sure, I'll do that before I start this. H is the, okay, here's, it's given right here in the label. It's the height of the water surface before it gets into that slope area right here where the water starts accelerating. So that H reflects the effects of this throat on the whole flow situation, OK? And that's what H is. I hope that answers your question. All right, moving on. Let's talk about some basic principles of fluid mechanics that we use quite often. Uh, the, there, are, there are three of them. I'll review all three, and I'll show you how to use them, both in pipe hydraulics as well as in open channel systems. The first one is called the law of conservation of mass. Uh, although we call it law of conservation of mass, in the case of uh, water, we know it's incompressible. Really, this takes the form of law of conservation of uh, volumetric flow, or we call equation of continuity. And that's because the density is constant, uh, and therefore, it's not a factor in the equation. So for steady, incompressible fluid, which is the density being constant, like water, both in a pipe or in an open channel system, we, this law of conservation of mass is stated as Q, the flow rate, is equal to V1A1 equals to V2A2, where V1 is the average velocity at, at a section, where the cross-sectional flow area is A1, and the same thing is on the right-hand side, V2A2, it's at another, another cross-section. So, all, most of you are familiar with this. It's called the equation of continuity. And by the way, in many, many problems on the exam, they may not give you or ask you to use this explicitly. You have to know that it, it is always valid, at least for steady flow. Uh, most of the time, that's what you will see on the exam, is a steady state situation. So it's not a function of time, and therefore flow coming in must always be flow going out. Uh, keep in mind, I will not talk too much, spend too much time about this concept of average velocity, and that's what we use in most of our problems. Uh, it's like a uniform velocity across the entire cross section. Uh, that's not a major problem in a pipe situation where the flow is flowing across the entire pipe. It might be problematic in an open channel system. So we do put a correction factor for utilizing the so-called average velocity. Uh, I'll explain that when we get to those specific situations. Q is the volumetric flow rate, or discharge, we call it, in CFS. A is the fluid area. Uh, in the case of a cross-section, in the case of pipe flow, full pipe flow, A is constant. It's equal to the pi, pi d naught squared over 4. I've set up a small example here. In this case, I have a full pipe flow situation. The At section 1, the velocity is 3 feet per second, and the diameter of the pipe is 2 feet. And of course, at section 2, uh, what I want to calculate is the velocity and discharge in this pipe. Uh, of course, to calculate the velocity at section 2 here, we have to know Q, the discharge. So the first thing we'll do here is use the upstream conditions that are given to calculate the flow rate, which in this case is V1, A1. Uh, V1 is 3 feet per second and the area of cross-section is pi d naught squared over 4. Please be very careful in this computation because many problems, they give you the diameter in inches. They never give it to you in feet. 
For example, I in this problem, the diamond.